Okay, kids, here's our X braced dreadnought top. Looks great. So now we're going to put our two tone bars on. And again, this is a discussion that, uh, you know, do, do what you want here. Believe what you want. Think about it as you want to. Traditionally, if this were a, a Martin, the, they, their tone bars would look something like about like that. They're fairly close. They're, they come this way. Uh, if you think about the guitar, this is the bass side. When you're holding it up, your bass strings are on this side. So this is a little, in theory, freer to move because it doesn't have the stiffness of these braces here. This side being the treble side, it's a little stiffer, more treble. It's one way you can think about this. Um, and again, they, these would traditionally, as a Martin, get cut, scalloped, or sloped down. Uh, so again, there's less, more floppiness on this side, stiffer on this side, and we'll we'll um, uh, scallop these. We'll use our chisel and and scallop these when we get to that point. But other people like Larave, which I love, Larave guitars. You gotta love their guitars. Uh, they put their braces straight across, and they claim they have less trouble with tops bellying so again take take that for what it is um, and, and again how uh, we don't know if 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 it's going to sound better there or if it's going to sound better there there's no way we can know this and again if you did you know you made the same exact guitar uh, all the time and you move this one this time one time and this one this time the next time you can't that's that's unknowable stuff and I would argue again that if you take Martin Guitar Factory and they build D28s all day long and every one of them exactly the same the wood comes right off of the same boards and everything one right after another yet you can pick up every one of those D28s and they all sound different they all feel different they all have a different uh, uh, that thing that that would draw you into it or not. You may like this D28, and I might like this D28 that came right off the line one next to the other. So if you can't if you can't take something as systematically built as a D28 as consistently the same every time but yet they they never sound the same they never quite feel the same they never do that thing the same that we want them to do that's the intangible here so so whether whether this is here or here we can't know what that is we I just defy anybody to make that make a case for that and people do and I get it uh, and they believe what they're telling and, and and that's great that's their belief system my belief system is you know what we do know is that the modern day steel string uh, guitars with an X brace work great they work great all the you know Dylan wrote all those great songs on old Martins and Gibsons and and uh, the Beatles and you know ultimately this is to make music and they work this is a great design. You don't have to reinvent the wheel here. Um, and a lot of people have. And they keep on trying. Uh, one of the big guitar companies just came out with some new bracing pattern, that's, uh, which I think is humorous. They've got all this explanation for why it works. They don't know. They can't know that. It's speculation. And it's a great speculation, but it's kind of BS. It's kind of snake oil. I don't know. I'm not buying any of it. All I know is that it works. And so take your braces and, and just figure out where you want them. You know, something like that, something like that, something like that. You know, you could put one big brace on a dreadnought. I don't. I usually on a bigger guitar will put a couple down here. But on my smaller guitars, I end up putting just one brace on there uh, wherever it looks appealing at the time. Now these are just scrap pieces of wood, but you're going to also then have your, um, 
what we call finger braces here, little tone bars of some sort. So that's going to look something like that, that and that. You're going to have a piece of maple, 3 30 seconds thick, that you're going to put down for the bridge plate. Now this is a little wide at this point. I'll probably cut that down to a couple inches. Uh, again, I'll determine that as I look at it. So, um, so at this point, I'm going to make and install these. I, at the same time, I can put all of my finger braces and these two braces, glue those in at the same time within my go bar deck. So again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put my radius on the bottom of my brace, my 25 foot radius on, on all of these. Now these little guys, they almost don't need to be sanded. They, they'll, they just fit in there because of the ease of this radius. You can almost put a flat one, but I sand them a little bit. Um, again, so you're gonna you can draw that on with our our ruler, our positive. We're gonna put our radius on there, and then we're gonna just figure out where we like these and glue them down, and put our finger braces in. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do that, which you've seen a bunch of times. So you know the drill there, and I'll sand those, and then we'll glue these. Okay, so I got my uh, tone bars radius on the bottom. So wherever I'm going to decide on those. I took a piece of my brace stock. I cut some five inch long pieces here. Uh, again, that just was represented basically the longest point here. What I do is I take, a, again, this is just my standard brace stock. So it's a half inch tall, a quarter inch on the footprint. And then I'm just going to go from corner to corner on these guys with a line. like that and the same here like so and I'm going to go over to my bandsaw and, and just cut that line <clears throat> become my my finger joints and my finger braces like that and that now the first thing I do on these is again I'm gonna these don't require much sanding because they're so short but just you know if you want to hit that a little bit on your radius Just to clean up your glue surface, that's perfect. Alrighty, those those look great. Now I'll show you what I do here now. Okay, so I got my uh, finger braces uh, sanded, and my these two tone bars are sanded on the bottoms with my radius. Now, on these guys, on these finger braces, I usually just center those out, uh, you know, through the whole the whole distance here. So, roughly got you know nine inches, say, until I'm starting to get into my. Stuff. So I might put one here at six and one at three. That looks about right. Also, this also is going to catch um, that corner of the bridge as well, which is fine with me. So I like these at, at three inches each. So I'm going to mark those as such. So I know where those go. And I'll do the same on this side every three inches. Center to center. So that's where those are going to go. Now, on these tone bars, I normally go ahead and scallop these a bit before I glue them down. So I'm going to I'm going to take and make a mark from you know any place here and and come down a bit 
I don't want to take a lot off, but I, I know I'm going to take off some of this. So um, I'm going to just run that through my bandsaw. I'm not going to do the traditional um, suspension bridge type of a uh, brace on these. This is what a Martin scallop brace would look like in profile. And I, I don't do that personally. I'll show you how I scallop my braces. And uh, But again, if you like the Martin traditional look, that's kind of what it looks like. So just think think about that when you're cutting it. So, so I'm going to run these two through my bandsaw real quick just to get rid of a little bit of this meat here. Taped those two guys down. Now the next thing I like to do is put a little detail on this end, uh, so again I don't have to come back and chisel. I'm going to do a little bit of the work of wasting some of this wood. So this I'm going to do on my belt sander. I think you can see that. So here I'm just going to put a little detail on this. That detail looks like that. Just a little round from... I'm going to do the same on uh, this guy. Then once I, once I decide where I want to put these, I'm going to angle this, uh, this corner, which is going to go something like that, so that where I decide to put this. And I'm going to look at this. Um, I also realize I'm going to have my end block here. So I'm going to kind of look at uh, just a fairly symmetrical approach to gluing these down. Uh, I don't want to have a lot of room necessarily that's unbraced. So I kind of will pull these in some areas like that. Again, I'm going to have a bridge plate in there. And these guys I'm going to do like so. So that's a fairly straightforward, traditional look to my, to my bracing. So um, I might pull this guy up a little bit there. I kind of like that. I might even have him nearly touching that guy. So I'm going to mark this here and here. That's where that guy's going to go. And I'm going to put this guy about like so. And again, I don't, I don't care that this doesn't come clear out to this edge. Uh, again, you're going to have your your uh, kerf linings in here, so that you know that's cov covering a lot of that area. Again, I'm I might come back a little bit more as I'm scalloping this to leave this base side a little floppier. So now that I know where these are going to go, I'm going to make a a line to take over here and just I just put a, an edge on there that uh, an angle on there that matches where I want to want to have that as my layout again uh, just a bit of an angle on on that edge I guess I hope you can see that an angle there that matches the my layout. So you can see now those look nice up against that. So that's where those are going to go. They're ready to go. I've got a detail here that I that makes it look cool. And I'm going to put that same detail now on all four of those finger braces.
the edge of my belt sander. So there you go. That's what that's going to look like. So I'll give you a little more close up of that. So there again, you can see the detail that's just done with my belt sander. Makes a nice detail. But then when I come back, after these are glued down, then I'm going to come back and chisel away a lot more of this meat off of these guys. So they'll be quite, uh, quite a bit less wood than you see there right now. And then here again, I, I've put this detail, and you can see I, I put an edge on that so that it matches my layout nicely, wherever my marks are, like so. There's my mark. So there you go. So that fits in there right and that one the same and again when we're when we're after these are glued down we're going to come back with our chisel and do chiseling and and scalloping on those to get rid of of some of the weight of the braces to let the top vibrate better okay so that's the again there's those finger finger braces there with the detail already on them ready to be glued down and then and then chiseled down more but that but what's nice is I don't have to work this now it's got a nice detail on it uh, ready to go alrighty so we're ready to glue these guys down and we're going to start up here and work our way this way so we don't get in our own way on each of those. I'm just keeping those parallel to this X on this in this case.
Okay, there it is, all glued up. Um, if it looks right, it's going to be right. Go on the internet, look at pictures, look at tops that are braced, and, and, and get a feel for where you want to kind of put this stuff. Uh, what it does for the tone, I don't know that we can know that, but we're really doing something here that's very traditional with our little variations on it. So it's not like you're way out of, out of, uh, out in left field with this sort of a thing. Uh, unless you want to try and invent your own bracing pattern, which is fine. But this is real traditional, real straightforward, American-made steel strain guitar uh, uh, configuration. So there you go. Once this is dry, we're going to put our bridge plate in, and we're going to put this straight piece up here, and we'll talk about that in the next process. Okay, kids, if you, uh, if you like and use or find uh, these uh, videos uh, interesting, educational, informative, or maybe just entertaining because you're up late at night, uh, we'd love to have you support us. There's a few ways you can do that. One is click the subscribe button below. That helps uh, YouTube uh, know what we're doing and that we're serious about this. Uh, also, um, you can hit that bell icon which tells you when the next videos are coming out. We're going to try and get at least one out a week now that we're up and running here. Also, uh, a good way to support us is become a patron over at our Patreon account. And again, there's a link below for that. Uh, Patreon's a cool way that you can sign up and give you know, five bucks a month or ten bucks or whatever you feel is worth it. Um, uh, if you're using these videos to actually build a guitar and find it interesting and fun, please support us through Patreon. That's, that's you know, I wish I could do this completely for free, but it takes money and time away from my other regular job. Uh, so, you know, it's a big undertaking and any support you could send this way is great. Uh, so, you know, it's it's all all been very fun so far for me and i hope you guys are having fun at this as well and we greatly appreciate all your support so thanks